Hello and welcome to this multi-part uh, 3DS Max tutorial on creating the companion cube as seen in the game uh, portal. Uh, I've got an image here, and this is what we're going to try and recreate in a 3D model. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to create each of these um, corner pieces. We're going to create one of these corner pieces right here, and then one of these middle pieces, and then rotate them around the box, create a box, create a cylinder, and we're pretty much done. There's multiple ways you can do this in Max, but what we're going to do is do this out of splines. It's pretty easy and it's pretty straightforward. Um, all we got to do is create two objects, mirror them, rotate them, and stuff. And anyways, without further uh, introductory bullcrap, let's just get started. So, my front viewport, Alt W that to maximize it. Right click my grid snaps, make sure grid points is set, nothing else. Close that, make sure grid points is checked. Drop down to shapes, go to rectangle, and right here, I'm gonna go uh, 70 by 70. Do another one right beside it, and 30 by 40. Drop down a circle. My origin, drag one out to intersect both of them. Right click that circle, go to convert to editable spline. Drop down to attach, and attach these other rectangles that we just made. I apologize for going too quick, um, but I hope the quality is good enough that you can pause it and catch up and see what I'm doing. I'm trying to go quick to like not make this into like 35 different videos so anyways let's go to spline go to trim and I know I don't need this bottom square so I'm gonna trim that out I'm gonna trim this middle piece out I know I definitely don't need this outer circle piece so I'm gonna trim that and then finally I don't need this so I'm gonna trim that alright so it looks like we're done but we're not S on the keyboard for snaps to get rid of that blue thing I know my vertices here aren't welded. How do I know? I just click one of them and I drag it out. Control Z to undo. Or I can just drag a box around them, scroll up here, and it says two vertices selected. So I'm just going to drag a box around all of them, or Control A to select all. Drop down and uh, weld. Convert this, actually before I convert it to an edible poly. I'm actually going to go to interpolation, and I'm going to drop my steps down to three looks good three and optimize this is just gonna like lessen the polygons in here when we extrude this stuff so uh, make sure optimize is checked too and then we'll right click convert to editable poly all right we'll select this poly here go down to detach somewhere there it is and object one is fine all right so we got this edible poly we need to go to hierarchy tab effect pivot only and I'm going to turn my snaps back on and we're just going to move this thing right to the top left hand corner of the steel. Uncheck that because it only drop down on polygon. We're going to bevel this thing out. Actually before I do that I'm going to Alt W out of this. Go to my perspective viewport. Alt W that one. And we're going to bevel that just so we can get a better idea of what we're doing. I'm going to do 20 inches and negative 10 I think. Yep, that'll work. Alt W that, go back in my front viewport. And my snap still enabled, we're just gonna move this top polygon. Boom, right there. So it's flush with the other ones. Now we'll see that these polygons right here, they look all faceted. So what we need to do is drop down to polygon mode, control click all these polygons, drop down here into uh where is it at? Polygon smoothing groups. I'll just do a clear all and I'll do an auto smooth. And then I'll get rid of all that faceting. Alright. Next. Let's take this polygon. I'm going to enable my angle snaps tool. Right click and make sure it's set to like an even number here. Make sure it's nothing crazy like 7.2 or whatever. 10's fine. I don't know. Whatever. The default 5, five is fine for me. Even though 90 degrees will work for me. Best and I think that's default so I'm just gonna rotate this uh, 90 degrees that way oops holding shift and rotating 90 degrees that way and OK and I'm gonna mirror that on the x-axis and click OK do this one again I'm gonna mirror this one 90 degrees this way OK and then I'm gonna mirror that one on the Z axis, no clone. Okay. 
So we got something that looks like this. So what we need to do is drop down here and attach these other ones. So now this is all one piece right here. So let's drop down into uh, polygon mode. Let's select all these inside polygons. And we'll just delete on the keyboard. Boom. So now, what do we do with all these open things here? Well, let's drop into edge mode. Let's select these edges right here. Oh, if you don't like this bounding box, hit J on your keyboard. Boom, gets rid of it. Really handy. All right, so these two edges, drop down here, go to uh, bridge, like that. These two edges, bridge. These two edges, bridge. These two edges, bridge. These two edges, bridge. And if you can guess what we can do with these two edges right here, I'll give you a million dollars. I'm lying, I'll give you a high five, but we are going to bridge them. High five. But we've got this open area right here, so what are we going to do with that? Actually, we're going to drop into our border selection. You can do that by pressing 3, or clicking this deal here, or going into border here. Multiple ways of doing it. So we'll just go into border, and we'll select this border right here. We'll go drop down and do a cap right here. And cap that off. So we're done, right? Well, not quite. When we rotated these things around, we created a couple overlapping vertices right here, right here, and right here. So if I select these vertices right here, I have two vertices selected. So I'm going to do a control A just like we did those editable splines and drop down to weld wherever that is oh jeez forty five we're losing three vertices I know that's how much I want so my 0 0.1 threshold is fine so I'm gonna click OK alright so next I'm gonna drop down to this polygon first of all I'm gonna click Alt W, maximize my front viewport, drop down here. If we go back to our reference image, it looks like it's got a, like a chamfer right here. So we're going to make that chamfer before we do it. Um, before we, uh, oops, before we uh, start beveling it. So I'm going to select these vertices right here, go down to chamfer. I'm just going to click and drag, and that's probably good. Actually, right click to get out of chamfer I'm just gonna control click these verts and move them up actually S to deselect my uh, snaps toggle I'm just gonna move them up just to accentuate that chamfer and I'm gonna select these verts here because they're fairly close to this outer edge ones they're not really doing much so we can actually remove them right here remove now we can drop down into polygon mode and we can bevel them. But before we do that, let's go into a better viewport. So let's go into perspective and I'll W that. And let's do a bevel of, yeah, 10 will work and how about negative uh, 5? And that's fine. I'll W back into the front viewport. And we need to move this polygon up so it's flush with that one. And that looks about good to me right there. Cool. Now, at 4, we got the same problem that we had on these polygons over here. We got this fastening effect. So, control click all these polygons. Oops, not that one. We'll go down here into uh, smoothing groups. We'll do clear all and we'll do auto smooth. Alright. So that's a baseline what we're going for. Uh, stay tuned for part two. We're going to continue modeling this. We're going to finish off this middle piece. We're going to build the box around this, rotate all these objects, and finish it off. So stay tuned for uh, part two. Or part two. <laughs> Later.